Welcome to Past and Precedent, the show where we take previous court decisions and see how we can fit them into today's legal puzzles. With Donald Trump pulling a Babe Ruth and pointing right at the Supreme Court before stepping up to the electoral bat, I figured I should probably talk about the last time someone challenged an election to the Supreme Court. That's right, Bush v. Gore, when five votes determined the outcome of a presidential election. So gather around everyone because it's story time. It was a new millennium and Americans were emerging from Y2K with a renewed faith in computers abilities to count to numbers over 2000. Electronic ballot counters? Sign me up! As the ballots came pouring in, it was an incredibly close race. Both candidates needed Florida's 25 electoral votes to win. Then Bush won Florida. Al Gore conceded his loss, and America was readying themselves for a peaceful transfer of power. Well, short episode. Okay, but Florida is really, really close. Too close to call? The vice president has recalled the governor and retracted his concession. But this race is simply too close to call. And until the results, the recount is concluded and the results of Florida, Florida become official... Our campaign continues. Congratulations, President Bush. Boy, are peaceful transitions of power fun. Wait, what? Ooh, too slow. We're challenging the election results in Florida. It must be awkward to reverse a concession. Uh, please disregard previous email. What's a prank? So Bush had won the popular vote in Florida, but the election results were so close that they were within a margin of error, triggering an automatic recount of the ballots. You know, to see if anything changes. And oddly enough, things did change. The original count saw Bush winning by 1,784 votes. When the machines recalculated the votes, Bush was winning by only 327 votes. Still winning, but now things were getting a bit weird. Can these machines even count? I told you Y2K was a thing. So the Florida Constitution allows a candidate to request a manual recount in specific counties. So Gore got on the phone with the four most democratic counties in Florida and told them to start counting by hand. Let's see if we can find 328 new ballots that have been marked Democrat but were disregarded by the machines. Now before we move on, I want to emphasize that this wasn't Gore sitting in a back room saying, hey, 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 yes, I want Florida manually recounting these specific district ballots and nobody else. It was a Florida election law on the books that said you could get districts to do manual recounts. So he pointed to that law and said, uh, do it. This is where the idea of a hanging chad came from. If you don't fully puncture the ballot for your candidate, the machine cast out your ballot. It was clearly biased against Democrats because, I mean, how can you expect a lifelong vegetarian to muster the strength to fully puncture a piece of paper? So with that, we had manual recounts in four of the most liberal counties looking through all of these discarded ballots. That included this guy, whose strategy seemed to be, maybe if I don't look through my prescription glasses, I can see the ballots better. Hope someone double checked his work. Wait, you tallied how many votes for Ralph Nader? So all that might sound suspicious for different legal reasons, but never fear, because here come the lawyers. Florida State Supreme Court was quick to act, ordering a manual recount of 9,000 contested ballots from Dade County, as well as a manual recount of all ballots in Florida that machines didn't register as voting for a president in either direction. Before we move on, I want to reread that previous statement with a bit more detail, because distinction between Dade County's court order and the entire state of Florida's court order is very important. Take notes, because it's going to be a major part on the final test. Dade County, as well as two other counties, were assigned to dig through the garbage can collecting ballots. These were the ballots that had been rejected from the machines, because that Chad was clinging onto it for its dear life. 
just scrape that little piece of spinach off the corner and see if you can establish who the voter was intending to vote for, and then add that to the total tally. In the larger state of Florida, including the counties I just mentioned, the assignment was to look at all the ballots that the machines had designated as abstaining from voting for anyone for president and seeing if there was some sort of just scratch or dimple that would determine if the person had tried to penetrate the paper for a specific candidate, but failed. So this all seems pretty weird, but legally speaking, what was the problem? Well, the Supreme Court had two questions that they had to answer. First, do standardless manual recounts violate the equal protection and due process clauses of the Constitution? And second, if standardless manual recounts were out, could any other recount method be decided and executed within the election time limit? Now to find answers, let's go to the decision. The main concern was that the recounts in these three counties were not limited to so-called undervotes, but extended to all of the ballots. The distinction has real consequences. A manual recount of all ballots identifies not only those ballots which show no vote, but also those which contain more than one, the so-called overvotes. Neither category will be counted by the machine. This is not a trivial concern. And they are right, let me put it in layman's terms. So let me get this straight for a second. You've identified three of the most liberal districts in the state, and you want them to manually count all of their uncounted ballots. But the other districts, yeah, only count their undervotes. Well, that sounds illegal. And what do you know? It is! The state Supreme Court's inclusion of vote counts based on these variant standards exemplifies concerns with the remedial processes that are underway. Now, this made it an equal protection problem. Upon due consideration of the difficulties identified to this point, it is obvious that the recount cannot be conducted in compliance with the requirements of equal protection and a due process without substantial additional work. Now, this was the uncontroversial decision that the court made, with seven of the nine justices coming together to say, yeah, Florida Supreme Court, you done messed this one up. The controversial question was, what now? So the recount violated civil rights, but the election results were still legally contestable. Do we just run with it? Now there was a creeping deadline in the back of everyone's mind. This case was decided on December 12th. And when was the deadline for states to nominate electors to vote for the president again? Oh right, December 12th. Whew, that's not a good sign. Really going for a buzzer shot vote recount on this one. It's a real case of allow the legally questionable recount results, or just kind of quietly present the contested vote count and hope no one notices or questions it. We ran out of time. Sorry. In a 5-9 vote, the Supreme Court ruled that, ooh, so sorry, but you know what that buzzer means? You're out of time. More technically, they wrote, that date is upon us, and there is no recount procedure in place under the state Supreme Court's order that comports with minimum constitutional standards. Because it's evident that any recount seeking to meet the December 12th date will be unconstitutional, for the reasons we have just discussed, we reverse the judgment of the Supreme Court of Florida ordering a recount to proceed. Well, I guess we're just going to have to go with what we got. Enjoy? When the recount was ended, Bush was winning by 527 votes. Gore had to concede a second time. This time, no backsies. So this is passive precedent. We got the pass part down. How might this function as precedent? You want to talk about freaking out over 9,000 potential hanging chads? Over 500,000 mail-in ballots were discarded during the primaries for arriving too late or voter error. Yup, it could end up as Bush v. Gore except at a level of crisis we could only expect at a 2020. 
If state elections are within a margin of error or challenged and contested by a candidate, it's going to trigger a recount. And depending on state laws, those disregarded legal votes could come into play in a similar way as to what we saw in Florida in 2000. As democracy scholar at Stanford Law School Nathaniel Persley put it, in the event that the election is effectively tied and comes down to a few of these states with a large number of absentee ballots, then we have a version of Bush v. Gore on steroids. I'm not quite sure how or if this president will fit into the larger 2020 picture. I mean, it's not exactly every day that our elections get appealed to the Supreme Court. But also, it hasn't happened yet. What I can say is that Trump is making it very clear that he's intending on challenging this to the Supreme Court. I think it's very important. I think this will end up in the Supreme Court. And I think it's very important that we have nine justices. And I think the system is going to go very quickly. The probability that no one can test election results in closed states is so low, I'm putting my money on that snowball in hell. What this precedent says is that, if someone wants to use state election laws to introduce new ballots or eject potentially fraudulent ballots and recounts, the rules have to be standardized amongst all of the ballots in that state. Gore tried to use on the book Florida election laws that said that a candidate could request a district do a manual recount of ballots. But the Supreme Court stepped in and said, if you're going to manually count ballots, you better bring enough counters for the whole class. Lastly, if all else fails, just run out the clock until December 12th. Biggest takeaway from Bush v. Gore though is, a vote in the hand is worth two in the bush. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, remember to smash that subscribe button like it's your presidential choice on a Florida ballot. Don't want any hanging chads here. I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.